So you have this great, beautiful house, but it sits on a not so great lot because people are really fixated on the house and not the lot sometimes. And I can tell you this, even the most stunning home can lose serious value if it's sitting on a less than ideal lot. So that's what we're gonna go over today because whether it's an awkward dimension or say a poor location or a steep slope, you know, the land your home sits on can, can make or break the long-term resale potential. A lot of people buy homes and don't realize that and they go to sell it down the road and then they can't get the money out of it. So if you're not paying attention to the land, you could be missing out on thousands of dollars in future resale. So worse yet, you might end up stuck with a home that nobody else wants. So let's break it down. I'm gonna tell you why it's just as important to have the right lot as the right house when it comes to buying or selling a home and what you need to look for before you buy a home and stay tuned to learn about each one of these types of lots and see if you're going to have that problem when you sell your home or if you want to you know if you're a buyer and you may want to steer far away from one of these lots because geez you know i can remember my first year in real estate it was a buyer's market and i went into a home that had been on the market for like a year gone through two realtors and having my background with new construction we built communities with my father and things like that. I took one look at the lot and I kind of knew why this home was not gonna sell and why it wasn't selling. Now, the inside was okay. It needed some of my magic and touch-ups and things like that, but which kind of lot was it on? You have to wait till the end to tell you so you can learn about all the different types of lot because not one realtor mentioned this about the lot and they weren't getting any showings. The home was priced the same as other comparable homes that were on, say, a perfect lot. like a, cul-de-sac or something like that because you know when you buy these new houses and these developments they have these premiums on lots and this one sure as heck didn't have a premium and then i sold the home in 25 days which was about my average at the time when the over mls average was like 150 days and we did some minor painting in the basement in the garage and we decluttered and that hadn't been done either and it sold quickly so stay tuned and i'll let you know which imperfect lot it was on but first let's talk about for example like what is the perfect lot? What makes the perfect lot? What most buyers dream about? They dream about this lot that checks all the boxes. It, it needs to be flat or rectangular. So it has a nice backyard, front yard. It's you know nice size away from other homes. It's on a premium lot, such as a cul-de-sac, something like that. Or some of the lots that are premiums are ones that have walkout basements, allows you to have the walkout basement. That's really important as well. So these lots are, are large enough on the backyard. It gives you some space to do some outdoor living. People love that. They love big decks and cozy patios, play area for the kids, play football. You know, a flat lot is also much cheaper to build on, but makes it a real magnet for both buyers and developers as well. And curb appeal, well, it's essential to have that. The, a great lot doesn't just sit there. It really enhances the home's present itself, it becomes more desirable. And when the front yard is visible from the street, it catches the eye. Some lots just don't, aren't, aren't visible. Houses aren't visible from the street because of a certain lot that's on. Also, there's also easy access to the driveway and garage. There's no funky turns or awkward angles. And the backyard, it's just great. You can do everything you want, whether you want a garden or a spot for weekend barbecues or a room for the dog to run around, all those different things. Homes on these ideal lots tend to sell faster and more often than not, they fetch a premium. So why do they get a premium? Because the lot makes the home more functional, more beautiful, and ultimately more desirable. Next, I know you've seen it. It's a sloping yard, right? It's a common challenge that many people have because their backyard kind of slopes back all the way down. Now, at the first glance, a sloping yard might not seem like a big deal, but there are complications that you really need to think about. So it could be difficult to use any outdoor space. You don't have any room to play and uh, you might not be even at a patio or a swimming pool or even just a garden. It's gonna require leveling and terracing maybe around the ground and that is expensive. So that may be something you might wanna consider if you buy a house, especially if it's too steep, you can't maybe do anything. It might limit your ability to do anything at all in the backyard. And uh, another thing with sloping is that you have water drainage runoff. A sloping lot maybe from front to back, from the driveway down, can lead to poor drainage, causing rainwater, say, to run uh, you know, towards the house instead of away from it, which can result in water damage to the foundation, water in the basement. And over time, it could be a costly repair that 
could lower the value of your home as well. Okay, so that's another thing as well. So you have to take that in consideration. So Dan, what about homes on a hill? Well, I've seen it. You're sitting up on the hill. It's stunning. You're perched up high. You have great views and great privacy. It's just beautiful. But let me tell you, it really comes with trade-offs. I've seen it many times. One a big issue is accessibility. Your driveway real steep and it can be a real challenge during bad weather. Homes on hills can be more exposed to wind or other elements, not to mention some soil erosion might can be a concern depending on the area. And if you don't manage it, that's long-term maintenance issues. So it's something to think about. There's some cost of being that on a hill and more expensive to build more expensive to maintain. So, you know, you have these great views and they're breathtaking, but your budget may not be as happy. So take a look at that. And what if you have guests coming over and they're handicapped? If your driveway's on a slope and they get out the door and they can't even get onto the driveway without slipping down, they may have trouble getting out of the car. So there's lots of things to think about and even just getting your mail, you know? You know, walk all the way down the driveway and walk all the way back, back up. Yeah, think about that one. So this is real uh, one that people don't really realize, but if your home's on a flag lot, like what's a flag lot, Diane? Well, I have a good photo to show you here. It's if you can visualize this, there's a flag lot. It looks like actually a flag. The the house is tucked behind another home. So the driveway, as you see here, is a long part, it's like the flag's pole. And the house is and the lot is like the flag, right? And while some people love the privacy because you've been set back from the road, a lot of times you're back up to the lot to a lot of trees, they can be really tough to sell. Well, why? Because, you know, you lose curb appeal, you don't get to draw people in, and also the house in front of you is not on a good lot either because they're looking out the window having dinner and looking into your front lawn, okay? And the driveway may, can be a little isolated, maybe you're stuck for days if, if you have a big snowstorm and can't get down that long driveway. And that doesn't appeal to many families, I know that, because people tell me. Also, if you like to sit out on lawn and, or your front porch and kind of want to see what's going on in the neighborhood, you're not going to be able to do that either because you're just going to be looking at the back of your neighbor's house. This is definitely a turnoff. I've seen homes sell for 10 to 20% off depending upon the house because of this. So, and if you're learning something new about lots, houses on lots, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, help a girl out. A thousand subscribers by the end of Thanksgiving. Support means a lot to me. Now for a bonus tip before we get to the next one, before you sell your home that's on one of these types of lots, you need to factor in the negative impact of the value of your home. And do not look at comparable homes to determine the value of your home if you have a lot in perfection, okay? Because you cannot compare your home to a home that's on a perfect lot. Just please remember that. Okay, next one, flood zone. Oh, and I think you all kind of know that if you live in a flood zone, it's a huge one. It just takes off the value. It doesn't matter how beautiful the house is, if it's in a flood zone, you've got to consider the risk, okay? Flooding can cause a lot of damage to the home and flood insurance is not only expensive, it's also mandatory if you're getting a mortgage. There's people, poor people in Florida getting hit again with another hurricane. Jeez, these insurance companies are broke. And if you paid all that money and you're not gonna get anything in return. So it depends on where you live. Plus weather patterns are changing. The flood zones are expanding in some areas. So be aware of all that stuff, all that, because it's in, flood insurance is very in, expensive, okay? And being in a flood zone can make it harder to sell your home in the future if you're buying one in a flood zone. Even if you do sell, you might not get the price you want. And if you're buying a home with cash, then the flood insurance is not mandatory. You can elect to have it or not. And then you can actually shop around a little bit more. And I just saw in this beautiful old restored uh, farmhouse from 1800s and it just couldn't sell it because water would just come through the house. It had like four or five times while these people owned it for 20 years and that became a fear to a lot of buyers that was absolutely gorgeous inside. That's what happens. Okay, what if you have a home that's on a corner lot? It's great, right? Corner lot sounds like a great idea. You know, at first, you know, we have some extra yard space and sides usually in the front. No neighbor on one side and often better visibility, but here's what people really forget. <laughs> I have to tell them more yard means more to maintain because you have two sides of the home exposed to the street. It might deal with more noise, more foot traffic, often no backyard at all. And it's all in the front yard and you have some on the sides. A lot more sidewalks to maintain, especially if your township mandates that you need to fix your sidewalks and curbing before you sell your home. It's very expensive. Very expensive. Also, especially if you're the first home in the neighborhood, you know, it's right there at the corner. All the neighbors drive by your house every day. And it gets a little noisy. Another downside, sometimes corner lots are more prone to vandalism and accidents, especially if they're near 
a busy intersection. So while the lot may offer some perks, you know, the extra exposure and the maintenance can turn buyers off. It does turn buyers off. Corner lots, people think it's great, but it takes off value and could have to be like 10% off. So beware of that. So what if you live in a house on a busy street? That's exposure right there. Um, some people don't mind. They like the hustle and bustle. For most buyers, they don't. They prefer quiet, more private locations, especially homes on busy streets tend to sell for less because of the traffic and the noise and safety concerns. What if you have a family that has young children or pets? They're not gonna wanna deal with heavy traffic right outside their front door. Plus getting in and out of the driveway can be a nightmare when there's a constant flow of cars. It depends on how busy the street is. So even if the home itself is perfect, the lot is can be a big turnoff for buyers. So really watch before you buy a house with a busy street and it could take another 10, 15% off. Well, you gotta think of one, another type of thing. It's, it's a house near a retention basin or some stormwater ponds. I've seen it. Every development, these planned developments have to have one. It's very common. It helps manage the rainwater, but if you're backing up to one, it will have a negative impact on your home's value. Why do you ask? Well, retention basins, they attract pests, mosquitoes, and things like that. If they're not well-maintained, they can turn into a really unsightly area. It's definitely an eyesore. You know, imagine, I don't know, showing a home to a buyer, and you're, or you're a buyer, and you're walking into a house, and everything's great, and then you look out the backyard, out the back window, and to the right, there's this is a huge retention pond. It's not good. And usually, it's turn off right there. Plus, there's always a concern that they might overflow during heavy rains, potentially flooding nearby properties and curious kids, you know, getting hurt playing in the pond area. Now they do serve as a functional purpose, but having one in your backyard, it's a selling point that most buyers don't want to have. They don't want to be saying, oh, look, here, my, my uh, pond in the back of my house, isn't that beautiful? No, they're not going to like that. Okay. Now, remember the house I was talking about in the beginning of the video? This is the one. We call it eyesore factor. What's lurking outside is what I call it. It's not the lot itself, it's the problem. It could be what's around it. And otherwise, a perfect home can, can lose a lot of value if there's an eyesore lurking nearby, whether it's next door, behind. You know, if you remember the house I was referring to, this house backed up, whose value was much lower in that neighborhood. They put this new development in, I think it was like 12 years before, and it backed up the homes at like say half the value and it was perceived undesirable neighborhood. It was, it was merely a perception that these potential buyers have that they wanna live around people with the same type of property. So imagine you find your dream home, but just beyond the backyard could be another thing. It was a, maybe a, a noisy highway, a beautiful lot and everything, but there's 309 in the backyard or the turnpike or power lines obstructing the view or industrial park or commercial building, okay? Or if you drive up to the house, everything's nice, but the guy next door does not take care of his home. You ever seen that? It's stuff everywhere on the front lawn, uh, a mess. That's an eyesore. And all these types of eyesores, guys, are going to have a negative impact on your home's resale value, no matter how stunning the house is on the inside. And there's also noise pollution. Maybe it's in a noisy area or maybe unpleasant views or uh, even bad smells from a nearby factory or water treatment plant. I've seen that a lot. Those are some of the most common complaints that we have as far as that's concerned. In some cases, the issues can lower homes value, like I've been saying the whole time, between 10 and 15%. And that might mean the buyers get the house, but they're gonna get it at a discount. And for sellers, that's a drawback for you. Sorry about that. But there's some of the lots that you might not wanna buy a house on, or if you're selling a house on an imperfect lot, it could affect your home's value. So it's not the house itself that makes or break the sale, sometimes just the land it sits on that can be the real deal breaker. So if you're house hunting, keep an eye on these factors and it's easy to get swept up in how a house looks or feels inside because demand is so high right now and the inventory is so low, but watch out for that. Always remember to think long-term, like what's the resale value gonna be? How much will it cost you to upkeep and will the lot itself make your life harder or easier down the road? Uh, so thanks very much for watching. If you found the video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell for some more home buying and home selling tips. See you next time.